Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got his Manchester United team playing so much better than they did under Jose Mourinho. And even fringe players like Scott McTominay and Andres Pereira, when they got the opportunity, they played fantastic. But just improving Manchester United is one thing, and Solskjaer has done it brilliantly. But getting this Manchester United team to beat Liverpool and City and win the Premier League is another thing altogether. And that is going to be the target next season. So for Solskjaer, or whoever gets the manager's job next year, Solskjaer, we already know it, that is the goal. And with that in mind, do you think this United squad is capable of challenging for the Premier League next year? Gary Neville doesn't think so, not without a few key signings. So what I want to do in this video is take a look at some recent comments from Gary Neville on the transfers that he feels Manchester United need to make next season to make this squad capable of competing with City and Liverpool. Before we get into it, if you are new to United People's TV, come on, go down there, hit the subscribe button, join the community. If you are a regular, make sure you drop a like on the video too, but let's get straight into it. Since he's taken over Manchester United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has the club top of the Premier League form table, even after that defeat to Arsenal. That's how good a job he is doing. But for fans, we're, we can all still see clear weaknesses in the squad. And Gary Neville has had his own say on what he feels are the weaknesses that do need to be strengthened in the summer. Speaking in an interview with B in Sports, here's what Gary had to say about the signings he considered an absolute must for United in the summer. Manchester United need two centre backs. Right. Uh, <laughs> I genuinely as well as Lindelof, you think yeah. he's good enough? No, I think I think he's done very well this season. But when you talk about Manchester United winning the Premier League title or trying to get to a Champions League final, and you need top centre backs, and at the moment they need two new centre backs, they need a right back. And that's a minimum, I think, in the summer. I think the club needed that last season and they didn't do it. They're going to do it. They've got to do it this year. So, yes, the lads that are playing there are doing well. They're achieving the capability. But I'm not sure they have the quality to be Manchester United centre-backs that will win the Premier League or the Champions League for the club. So the first question to answer there is, do Manchester United need two new centre-backs? I think Gary is absolutely spot on. I do think we need two. For me, it's the clearest weakness we do have in this squad. Even though Victor Lindelof has been brilliant, certainly getting better as the season has gone on, we need better centre-backs in this squad. It is an absolute must. I mean, if you look at the squad itself and the centre-back options that we have, who would you be happy with being at the club next season? Victor Lindelof, I'd keep him. Eric Bai, I'd keep him. Chris Smalling, I'd keep him. I know I've always said that I would keep Jones ahead of Smalling, but the form I've seen from Smalling under Solskjaer, maybe, has shown me that I'm wrong. And that was back in the wrong horse. But certainly one of Smalling or Jones has to leave this summer. Because Rojo, don't want him in the squad next year. Vamos. Either Jones or Smalling, one of those has to leave as well. So that's going to leave United with three centre-backs. Lindelof, Bay, and Smalling or Jones. That is not enough to win any sort of trophy, really. Three centre-backs. You need at least four have two in every position. But not only that, it's the quality. And out of them, Lindelof, clearly the player who has the highest ceiling now. Eric Bai, starting to really get concerned about Bai. Love his attitude, love his approach, but I mean, he was awful against PSG. Awful. And he's done that quite a few times. He certainly struggled to refine that form he had right at the start of his United career because the injuries. I'm not sure about Bay. I really, really am not. Smalling, I don't think he should be starting next season for United. But clearly, he's a decent enough centre-back to having the squad. I suppose it can be the Johnny Evans of a Vidic-Ferdinand partnership. That's how I see Smalling fitting in next season. So whoever comes in at centre-back, we need some proper leader. Gary alluded to it there, but Van Dijk and Thiago Silva, the player that you all know that I quite like, Kalidou Koulibaly. Somebody to come alongside and lead Victor Lindelof, lead that defence. That's what we need. And certainly, if we get rid of Rojo and another one like Jones or Smalling, you could probably bring in another player. Somebody who I suppose is a bit like Victor Lindelof when we signed him. Somebody who was young, promising in another league, but clearly at the position where they wouldn't mind fighting their way through, at least for a season or two. Because I think if we were to sign two established top draw centre-backs, then Lindelof would get pushed out of that starting eleven. I'm not sure that'll be fair to him. But let me know what you think about the centre-back 
issue at United? Do we need one signing, two signings, three signings? Or are there players that you would keep there that I would rather see leave? Overall, in centre-back, you can see we have a clear problem. And I don't think this squad is capable of challenging for the Premier League properly unless we do bring in reinforcements. That is an absolute necessity. And another necessity, I agree with Gary spot on here, Man United need a new right back. Holy hell, Man United need a new right back. We've been saying it for a long time, but we can really, really, really see it now because our left is working so well. You've got Luke Shaw, Victor Lindelof, Paul Popper and Anthony Martial down the left-hand side. That is our main attacking threat. Watch our build-up play, watch our football. So much of it comes down the left. Hardly any of it comes down the right because you've got Antonio Valencia, who's leaving in the summer. That's the right decision. He shouldn't be starting a right back for United, and he isn't. Then you've got Matteo Darmian, who's just disappeared. Rightfully, he's not good enough to play there either. Ashley Young, as good as he is as a professional, I love his attitude. He says all the right things as a United player. He seems to do all the right things as a United player, off the pitch. On the pitch, Ashley Young, I can't, can't even begin to describe how frustrating it is to have Ashley Young at right back. Yes, he's a good player and he runs and he does this and he does that, but he's not a modern day fullback. He'd get absolutely nowhere near the Liverpool team, absolutely nowhere near the Man City team. And these are the levels that we now have to look towards to get this squad capable of winning the Premier League. And that can't happen with Ashley Young at right back. It's as simple as that. Of course, there is a player that maybe it could be in the squad, and that's Diogo Dalot, who has really impressed under Solskjaer when he's come in with some substitute appearances, earned himself a starting position against Arsenal, but that was at right wing. It feels like Solskjaer trusts Dalot more going forward than he does in defence, and I think that's spot on because Dalot clearly has a lot of promise going forward. Excellent footwork, good pace, and a wicked cross on him as well. But defensively, he seems to be a little bit too slow at the moment. Hasn't properly adapted to the Premier League. Could he be our right back next year? Absolutely. If Solskjaer trusts him enough, then maybe Dalot can be the solution. But if he was, we'd still need a backup there. And maybe Ashley Young would stay there as a backup and that will be the setup that we've got. But United need to sort that right wing, the whole right flank out. Because if we don't have a right back who can properly attack and defend, we're screwed. Down the right-hand side, we're going to be so blunt, it's going to come back across through Popper down the left every single time. You need that unpredictability of being able to attack down the left and the right flanks. And without a new right back, United will not have that next year. But as well as wanting two new centre-backs and a new right back, Gary Neville wants another couple of signings as well. Discussing United's transfers in a bit more detail in the same interview, this is what Gary had to say. No, I still think they need a strengthening in other areas, but I would say three defenders, one midfield player and one striker because of the form of Alexis Sanchez. Unless he completely changes what he's doing in the next few months, yeah. Manchester United need a striker and they need a midfield player and they need three defenders. So I would say five additions to the squad, two or three leaving. and I think the squad will be in good shape and potentially could challenge if they carry on like they are doing now. So the first point to look at there from Gary is the idea that United need a new midfielder. What do you think about that? Do you think that we do need a new midfield signing? I do, and I think Gary is right again here. As well as those two new centre-backs and that right-back, I feel we need to bring in a younger, better and more mobile version of Nemanja Matic. Matic has certainly had a resurgence in form under Solskjaer, but he's slow. He's powerful and physical, but he's slow. He's static. And that's not the sort of player that is going to work in this Solskjaer system. It's why Lukaku took so long, lost a bit of weight, regained some sharpness to get back into the team. Matic, just, for me, doesn't fit as well as somebody else could. Who that new defensive-minded midfielder would be, I don't know. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But I think if we do want this midfield to be as dominant as it could be, Paul Pogba, incredible. Fred showing a really good bit of form at the moment. Maybe he can have a spot there next year. We've still got Andy Herrera, obviously, who's been brilliant under Solskjaer. But that defensive midfielder, I think we need that. Now, players like McTominay, Pereira, they've come in when the injuries were there and they've done brilliantly. But I don't think they'll be starting week in, week out for Manchester United next year. Not if we're going to win the Champions League or the Premier League. And that is the goal and the aim next season. So you've got to be cutthroat when you're saying that. And I feel Matic isn't good enough 
to do it for another whole season. I think if we're really going to be investing in this squad, bringing in a new defensive midfielder, like a younger Michael Carrick maybe, that's what you want this summer. And the final point that Gary had to make there, he's saying that United need another striker. Now here, I disagree with Gary. I don't think United need to look for a new striker in the summer transfer window. If you look at the options that United already have, Marcus Rashford, our main man, our main striker, he's going nowhere. Anthony Martial just signed a new five-year deal, he's going nowhere. More played as a winger because Solskjaer only likes to use one striker, but Martial and Rashford. Then you've got Lukaku, who clearly, as we've seen recently, can have a role on the Solskjaer. Still scoring plenty of goals, hasn't played too often this season, but he's still a goal threat. And then you've got Alexis Sanchez, who's in and around the squad still. And then Mason Greenwood, who just made his debut at 17 in the Premier League. We've got options there. And then, of course, if you do sell some players, your options are reduced. And I expect Alexis Sanchez to be sold this summer. It clearly hasn't worked for him at United. Cut your losses, United. He's the best paid player at the club. That's outrageous. Sanchez is an expensive statue and he needs to leave in the summer. Would Solskjaer really sell Sanchez and Lukaku in the same window? Would Solskjaer want to sell Lukaku? I still feel that that could happen. Maybe not both in the same summer, but I don't see Lukaku being a United player for four, five, six years. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you disagree with that. But out of those options, I think if United were then left with Rashford, Martial, Lukaku and Greenwood, I think that would be enough. I think if United are going to sign anybody in an attacking position, it has to be a right winger. An out and out right winger. Not somebody who can play across all three positions. Is A right winger. End of story. Jadon Sancho is a player who clearly could be capable in that role. And I'd much rather see United spend money on that, a new right winger, than a striker. When I feel we're okay in that position. Certainly stronger there than in other weaknesses in the squad. But let me know what you think about Gary's comments below. Overall, I think Gary Neville's pretty spot on with what he had to say. Two new centre-backs, I agree with that completely. We do need that if we're going to challenge. One new right-back, please get that new right-back. And a new midfielder, I would say defensive midfielder, but let me know who you would sign or whether it be someone more attacking. But the player I would disagree with there with Gary is Probably a striker. I don't think we need a striker. Even if we sell Sanchez, I still feel we've got enough firepower in that squad to challenge next year. I think if you're going to sign an attacker, it has to be that right winger. But let me know what you think about Gary Neville's comments on United's summer transfer window that's coming up. What do we need to get this squad ready and capable of challenging City and Liverpool for the title? Who do we need? How many signings? Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, if you're new to United People's TV, Subscribe down there. Until next time, take it easy.